What do you say when something is both the subject of a verb and an object of the verb or of a preposition? In the last episode of this Grammar Fundamentals series, we covered personal pronouns, the choice of which depends in part on whether something is the grammatical subject or object. For example, I love you, not me love you. And similarly, you love me, not you love I. But you wouldn't say I love me or you love you, because in both cases, the subject of the verb is also its object. In such cases, you're supposed to use reflexive pronouns, so-called because the object sort of reflects back upon the subject. Reflexive pronouns add self or selves to the end of personal or possessive pronouns. I'm trying to get with her, but Dana won't even hook me up. I told you to hook yourself up. Here, Dana makes Craig both the subject and the object of the verb hook or hook up. And so she says, I told you to hook yourself up. The other reflexive pronouns are myself, himself, herself, oneself, itself, ourselves, yourselves, and themselves. But reflexive pronouns can also serve another function, that of intensive pronouns. Intensive pronouns emphasize the participation of an already stated subject or object. You're lucky I'm not a man, otherwise I kick your ass myself. Here, Debbie tells Debo that although she's a sort of um, diminutive woman and he's a gigantic man, nevertheless, she personally will beat him up. She won't get somebody else to do it. She'll do it herself. So she says, I'd kick your ass myself. You can easily identify an intensive pronoun if you can remove it without really changing the meaning of the sentence. I'd kick your ass really means the same thing as I'd kick your ass myself. It's just that the latter adds nuance or emphasis that the former doesn't have. So now that you understand reflexive and intensive pronouns, you better use them correctly or else. Break yourself, fool! What do you say? <laughs>